All right, I'm gonna start some more wiring uh, for all the items that go in the roof uh, or through the cage. These are my quick lights. Um, I have quick lights on every car I own, every, every you know side by side I own. I love them. I think they're a great product. I love the light that they put out. Um, this is an optional base that has an integrated brake light in the bottom of it. Um, so normal quick lights are just this part, and it has one big LED that shines up, and that's it. All the whips, these are the short little stubby whips, are just fiber optic. There's no electronics in these at all. So that light just shines through that hole and illuminates the whole, the whole whip. They're beautiful. It's real consistent. It's indirect lighting, so you don't have like that bright LED shining right in your face or anything, um, except for this brake light, which is a real nice bright LED. Um, I have them on Brooklyn's car as well. Um, you can see here, uh, and this is black anodized. I think you can get that in polished also. I'm not sure if that's the way it was on my old YXZ. Um, it is an extra wire, of course, to run up to the brake light. But I tell you what, when you're behind this car and you hit the brakes, it is very obvious that the brakes are on. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing. These are gonna be mounted higher on this car. Um, oh, you know what? Here's my Armax. This is a this is the whip without the brake light module. Um, it's just the whip there. Um, and you can get different lengths. So this is a, uh, I guess this is a four foot whip with a, I got a flag on it obviously, but that's a four foot whip. You get four, six, two foot. Here's, here's some two foot. Um, and they can customize them too. It's just, you, you can probably customize it yourself. You can even just cut them off if you, if you want them between, um, yeah, so I, I just noticed Brooklyn's also has a flag on one side. I normally just run the short ones on, on it during the day, and then I put the longer ones on at night if I'm out. So it depends. But anyways, kind of cool. Uh, really like them. Great product. They're always at the Sand Sports Super Show. Uh, talk to the guys there, um, and he'll give you a little demo. Also, if you ask them, they, uh, they will take that whip and swing it like a baseball bat and smack it right up against another one or up against a metal pole or whatever to demonstrate just how strong they are. Um, and that's one of the greatest things about them is there is no electronics in this. It is just a, a empty fiber optic tube with a nice billet bottom. They work kind of like an air truck on the bottom. So you, you pull that back and clip it on. This is their new updated design. They had an older one. This is These are some old quick lights that I have <laughs> on my stereo. Don't ask why I have them on my stereo, but see the old ones used to be, it was a straight up air truck. Um, when I turn my stereo on, they turn on. That's why I, I have them over here. But um, available in a variety of colors. I just choose a static color. Um, blue obviously on this car, blue on the Armax, red on Brooklyn's car. Um, but you, and, and it's red on the uh, X3 as well. But you can get they have a multicolor model um, that you know you can have it comes with a little remote and you can do the circus show or you can scroll through colors or pick a static color with that, whatever. Kind of kind of neat, I guess. Um, one cool feature of their multicolor light, I think, is they have an optional module for brake lighting on your whip. So when you hit the brake, the whip itself turns red, or, and I, I don't know 100%, but I think even a turn signal kit for more and more uh, side-by-sides, or more and more states are allowing street legal side-by-sides, you can hit a blinker and your left whip will blink yellow uh, or amber, and you hit a, another, you know, the, the right side blinker and it blinks the, the right one. So that's kind of cool, but I don't, I don't mess with all that. I'm not street legal. I don't really care about that right now, but so I like to break a lot of my YXZs. That's that. What I'm gonna do now, um, I've tentatively ran some of this wiring just kind of loose earlier. Um, so I'm going to route that up. So right here where you've got this joint, I, I, I'm gonna drill a hole here and insert my wire and fish it up. And I'll drill another hole here um, so it comes out for that whip and then I'm going to continue more wire down here and drill a hole here, uh, to come out for my light bar. 
Um, so there's various places I'm going to be drilling holes. Uh, of course, this is your safety cage you're talking about. So you do not want to drill, drill excessive holes. You don't want to drill them too big. Um, I do use these grommets. These are available at your, any of your local, you know, electronic stores or whatever. Maybe a car stereo shop has them. Not sure, but um, I just use these and a uh, step bit. And um, that's it. I'm going to start drilling some holes and then I'll fish the wire. Um after uh, after I get all the holes done. So I got it kind of started. I always put the holes on the kind of kind of an inside low side so water doesn't you know like get in the top or whatever. Also it kind of conceals it better. Um, I kind of started it because you know it's kind of a pain in the butt to, to get a bit to start. And I'm using a small impact so it's gonna start make an impact noises once it gets some stress or resistance to it. It's not really the best way to drill a hole, but it's what I got. This one looks like it's a 9 16 hole. Actually, it might be a 5 8 That's pretty big, but it's what I need for all this wire for, there's several devices on my bar. All right, so my step bit is uh, is just not quite strong enough. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, I got the that one down there at the base. It's the right size now, and um, I just did a kind of a pre-drill with a small bit, uh, like an eighth inch or something, and then I'm just kind of stepping it with 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 regular bits now. Um, these are carbide tipped, you know, metal blades, metal bits. Not very hard to do this once uh, once you get it started. Since it's a round tube, getting it started is a bit of a thing and not hurting yourself. And this one is for the light bar up here. So I'm going to step it up 
to the next size, which I think it's like a quarter inch or something like that for these, these smaller grommets. And then uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I got my holes drilled. Um, I'm starting at the light bar and I'm, I'm fishing my wire from, from the light end back down to the other end because that's at the bottom of the cage. So in other words, as I'm pushing the wire, it'll automatically stop at that spot instead of if I was fishing from there all the way to here, I wouldn't really know where to stop. You know what I mean? The wire might just pass right by my hole. So this is easier. Um, I'm using that same wire I used in some of my other videos. This is a 16 gauge four conductor. Uh, it's actually speaker wire. Um, I use it from my business. I have a home automation, home audio video business. Um, and uh, it, it's, I love it because it's tight and it's it's got good gauge, it's good copper content, and it's uh, it's double insulated. So each of the four conductors is insulated as well as they're all in this one common jacket. It's fire rated and it's like FT4 and CL3 rating and all this and that. It's just good wire. It's not designed for cars or for automotive use, but I've always used it and I, and I like it. So uh, as you see there, I just, all I did was just push it back and it's already hit hitting down there. And as you can see, oh, there it is coming out of the hole. So um, that made it nice and easy. This wire is stiff enough that that you can just push it. You don't have to use a fish tape or something like that. Okay, so that's one. That's for the light bar. I'll pull some more slack out. So the second one, um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually running a couple other, a second run, same wire, but I'm gonna insert it here. This is for my whips. Uh, so it's gonna go in this tube down that way. So it's a real short run, that's the good news. It's only like two feet, maybe even less than that. The bad news is there's already wire coming out of that hole down there, so it might be a bit of a booger to fish it out. So I'm gonna cut this one for the light bar, and then I will uh, start that. Let me see if I got enough length here. kind of have a typical method here. I have like a bit of a terminal block, not really a terminal block, but I have like a little spot in the back where I put a bunch of connections. Okay, that's enough slack for me for back here. Um, so now, one more. So now I'm just gonna cut that. this. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Start the wire at the light end and push it that way in the common tube. And in a second, we'll feel it hit the end. Okay, so I'm hitting. It's probably behind this wire. So I'm gonna get a like a seal pick, or maybe a uh, maybe a uh, yeah. You can see it in there. Uh, I've just got to fish it out. So I'm gonna get a little seal pick here, something like this. Handy little tool. I've found working with UTVs and stuff, I've found that a lot of the guys that do this stuff for a living, they're good mechanics and they can handle all the motor, they can handle all the chassis, they got all that, but there's a lot of guys that just don't know anything about wiring 
or or they know enough to be dangerous. It's kind of a challenge for them, you know what I mean? And nowadays, it's like so much of what we do in the automotive world is based on electronics and low voltage wiring and control systems and tuning and all that. It's 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 so there's so much technology and everything now. You can't even get a basic Ford or sedan or even a pickup truck. I mean, everything just has so much technology in them now. So it just so happens that wiring, low voltage wiring is kind of my specialty. It's what I do for a living in houses. And it's different in, in cars and automotive world, I know, but but there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of general principles that apply both ways. Okay, so I got it lassoed. I just need to, I'm gonna pull it back. Too much. I did some work a long time ago when I was a teenager, in my early 20s, I did some work in car stereo. I loved it, I miss I miss car stereo. Um, I just could never really make any money in the industry, so I changed to homes. And um, it, it's, it's different. Business is hard now, so I can't really say that, that money is much different in, in any industry. It just seems like everything's hit hard with all this with all this stuff we got going on. Okay, so like I said, the second wire is always a challenge just because we got one in the way. The first wire basically fell out of the hole and this wire, see like I, I got it. I've got it kind of lassoed. Um, but I'm trying to pull it past that second one. So I'm struggling with that a little bit. Like you need chopsticks. I could just yank really hard if I didn't think I was gonna break my pick. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, there it is. So I'm gonna pull a little more slack there. And then, so this one that I just did is for the whips. So like I said, this is a four conductor wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna strip it back and pull, pull two conductors out right here that connect to this whip. And then I'm gonna take another two conductors, uh, cut them real long, like another six feet or so, put them in this pipe and then push them all the way down there and pull out over there. So for that second whip. So, so all the wire is run in the tubes. The only wire that's not gonna actually be in the tube is for my antenna. Uh, first of all, it's not long enough to, to reach up there to that center. I kind of had a tab right there for the antenna. It's not long enough, but also I would have to undo this termination that Rugged Radio puts on it. And I don't wanna do that. Um, it, they, they, they've done a nice job on, on what they do. And um, that that's just too big to try to fish in the tube. I'm not gonna drill a one inch hole in this or whatever. So all I'm gonna do is just get um, like an Axia alloys mount or something like that. And I'm gonna just kind of mount the antenna to the tube right here real close. So it'll be kind of low like this one is over here. Um, there's not a tab welded on Carter's cage on the blue car over there, like there is here on Brooklyn's. But that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get an aftermarket mount to uh to attach it to that side just so i don't have to run that antenna wire all the way up there i don't think it's worth it so okay so that's it i'm gonna i'm gonna fish these over and i'm gonna i'll, I'll get the camera back out whenever i'm putting these grommets in um these grommets are actually one size bigger than i really needed so i drilled the appropriate size hole and now all i'm gonna do is cut these grommets like like you can cut them 
you know, cut cut the body of them and then uh, basically treat them like a C-clamp, you know what I mean? Then I'll just, just smash them down a size smaller um, so that um, I can keep the grommet protection, but uh, leave the holes as small as possible. I just don't want any bigger holes than needed in the safety cage. I'm gonna show you how I do this. Um, this diameter is slightly too big, so what I do is I cut a section out and I try to make sure there's no like real abrasive edges on it. So here and here, so I basically just sectioned it is all I did. So now that'll fit in the hole. I'm just gonna go wrap the wire and I'm gonna hide the, the part that's, that's snipped. Take this, drop it. At least to hit the ground. I'm gonna wrap it around the cord. It's it's too hard to fish the wires if you've already got the grommets installed, so that's why I put them on afterwards. So now I'm gonna rotate it so that the cut side is not on an edge that's gonna be either seen or that the wire is gonna rest on. So now I just push it in like this. And there we go. Okay, so next I'm going to be doing some heat shrink work um, to better insulate the wires, protect them a little more, give them some strain relief, and it also uh, looks better. So this is just like a little package of, of assorted sizes. I go through the bigger sizes fast, so I've already gone through that. But this is, uh, I guess this is, says it's 3 16th, so I'm using some of that on some of these. And then you can just buy like a spool of heat shrink. I get, I don't know, Chicago. This probably came from um, Harbor Freight or maybe my local electronics store. Um, so basically all you do is peel out or unroll a section, cut it off, and it, it splits open. It's like that, so it's round. So I just take some of that and I slide it over, like here, I slid it over this wire that came out of the grommet. And um, so there's several layers to that. There's the, there's the inner jacket on, on, on each conductor, then there's the white outer jacket, and then I wrapped it in electrical tape, and then I slid this heat shrink over it. So there's several layers, plus the grommet, before it gets to the actual steel of the cage. So if it were ever to wear down, it's all very well protected. I decided to add these dome lights. This is a couple of those blue rock lights um, from Baja Designs. I got one on this corner, one on that corner. The reason I did that is, first of all, I have enough wire. This four conductor wire, I'm gonna have one wire for ground. Um, that's my black conductor. And then I'm gonna have the whip lights the dome lights, and then my brake light. Um, so I, that's what these individual um, positive conductors will be. Um, so these these uh, uh, quick light models are, are, uh, have the integrated brake light like I told you about. So there's one wire that comes out for the brake light, and then there's another wire that comes out for the whip light. So that's what I'm, um, I'm using my four conductors for. Um, so I basically put heat shrink around each one of the pairs just to kind of give them some extra protection. I'm sorry, my phone is not focusing very well. Um, so now I'm just going to basically clean it up. I route them together. I, I, I zip tie them together and I bring them kind of all, all into one kind of pigtail here. And then I, I put, I put ice cream cones on them, uh, like crimps. I use these, um, these little, I call them ice cream cones because they look like little ice cream cones. If you hold it like that, it looks like an ice cream cone. <laughs> so I like using these because you can insert your wires from the same direction. So like I'm going to tie, like for example, this, this ground wire and this ground wire together 
Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. I'm gonna tie these two ground wires together, you know, just get them, get them twisted up and everything like that. And then I can slip a snow cone over that one or, or an ice cream cone over that one, because uh, both the wires are coming from the same direction. Now I would use something different like a, uh, like a barrel connector, like one of these, if, you know, you're basically splicing the wire. So one comes from this way and then one comes from this way into the wire. I'd use something like that. Anytime I use crimps, I, I try to put heat shrink over it or at, at least tape if, uh, if I can. So, um, I'm going to, I've kind of put heat shrink on that side. I'm going to move on to this side and I'll, I'll put it, um, I'll get the camera up closer so y'all can kind of see it. So none of these have heat shrink on them. They just have, uh, like I say, here's that white outer jacket, then a, a little bit of black, uh, uh, black electrical tape. I really do that just so that it's black and not, and it kind of conceals that white outer jacket. So I tuck it in so that the electrical tape is more or less another layer there. And then um, I have these four conductors. So I'm basically going to put heat shrink on this one, on this one, um, on these that come out of the quick light, and then on these that come out of the quick light for the brakes. And then I will, um, after that, I'll begin crimping them all. Once I get them all crimped and nice and tied up, then I put loom over it all. So there's several layers to conceal it and several layers that, um, you know, that make it um, more protected as well. So here it is for the light bar. So I just slid that heat shrink over it. Um, the white outer jacket, the electrical tape, the grommet, and then the heat shrink all go in. So next I'm going to use, I use this uh, Milwaukee cordless heat gun. Uh, this is new, I, I've just recently got this tool. Um, one thing I don't like about it is it doesn't get as hot as, as I would like, like, you know, heat guns that I've used in the past or, or, or any kind of, um, corded heat heat gun um, get significantly hotter faster so I have to hold it really really close before it even starts to shrink there it goes So I'm, I'm going to hit that again once I get a little bit, um, once I get a free hand. So I start with, I stripped these wires, I shouldn't have stripped them yet, but slide the heat shrink over them. So this brown loop, I don't use that, um, that is for a strobe effect that the quick lights offer. It uses a another part that quick light sells. It's a separate proprietary thing. If you're not using it, you keep that brown wire as a loop in, uh, you just keep it intact. So that was for the whips. This is for the brake light, I think.
Maybe I have that backwards. Maybe this is the whips and that was the brake light. I can't remember. This uh, brake light, or this pair that I'm working with here have a little uh, box attached to them. It's, I just kind of had it wrapped up there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out just so I have better access to the, to get the heat, heat on it. Okay, so I'm going to slide that up there. And I'm going to go ahead and heat these. If you've never used heat shrink for your electrical connections, I highly recommend it. It's a much more professional finish and it seals better. Okay, so I'm actually going to put another, I'm going to kind of double over on this one because it's not quite long enough. The way I'm routing this wire is shorter than I want it to be, but, uh, but it's okay, it's still going to work out. These are pre-cut little lengths of heat shrink that are out of that box that I had there, so that's why these are not quite long enough. But you can double them over. After you heat, heat up one, it shrinks enough that you can slip the same one right out over it again, depending on how big your wire is. Okay. So that's those two. I'm gonna go cut off a length of that bigger heat shrink off that, that spool, and then I will um, add it to these two right there.
Okay, that's all the heat shrink. This uh, rock light already has, I would say, significant. It's black and it's got significant protection and it's not passing through any metal or anything like that. So I'm not gonna put any heat shrink on it. Okay, so I switched sides. Um, I'm just gonna zip tie these all together in a way that I believe I can make them look good. Um, I actually reuse zip ties. Call me frugal, which is very unusual. I don't consider myself a frugal person, but I don't like waste. And when you cut a zip tie, if you cut it on this side, you can reuse it. So here it was long and, and now I'm reusing it for something kind of short. So the reason I'm doing this here is I want to route these two wires together in like one pigtail because I'm going to have loom that goes over these two. So that's those. And then I'll probably do the same for these two. Bring them all together like this or something like that. I'm not sure yet. It's kind of a struggle when you have, I'll have to cut some of these to length. So what I'll do here, since these two are such you know, different lengths. I'm not gonna cut length off of this because coming out of this light, I only have that much wire and that's all it's ever gonna have on it um, without opening that thing up and adding more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna put a loop um, because these black wires, all, all four black wires you see all go to the same place. So what I'm gonna do is just take this, loop it around so that these two black wires come together at the same place. There we go. So something like that. And I'll join these other black wires with it. And we'll have our first connection to make with this ice cream cone. I'm going to pull this red wire under. This is pretty difficult because all your wires are coming from different places. Some of them are different sizes. They're all different lengths. Um, so this is... UTV wiring is like this all the time. So it's really, it's, it's really hard to make a UTV wire... Um, just, you know, all the wiring and everything look right. I've seen a few that were just stunning, like Can-Ams behind the seats and stuff like that, um, that I was just amazed at. It reminded me of car stereo days when you have world-class wiring jobs. Um, mine's not going to be that good, but I'll tell you, it's, it's going to be protected at least. And I don't like like wire just hanging loose around the frames and stuff like that. So I won't have that at least. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in here as well. And I will tie up the length. I promise I'll take care of it. So I'm going to get all the ground wires in the same place. And I'm going to go ahead and put a ice cream cone on that. That one that is shorter than all of the others is really making this a bugger. I'm 
probably should have stripped back more copper on each of these because then I can just kind of freely twist them all and then just cut off this lag. I've almost got it here though. So these ice cream cones are made for certain gauges. So they make them, this is kind of a medium sized one. They make them bigger and smaller. You could use a wire nut in the same fashion as an ice cream cone. I don't like using wire nuts on things that move. Wire nuts are fine in houses, but in cars, they get wiggled around and stuff like that, and it's just not ideal. I know a lot of people that dislike crimps. I'm not one of them. I like crimps. Okay. All right. So I just kind of give them, all four of them, kind of a light tug. They all feel pretty firm. Okay. So now each of these three red wires, uh, the three smaller red wires, this one, this one and this one. Each one of those goes to a different color on this four conductor wire coming from the, the switch pros. So everything on the car, every light, every electrical circuit, the black wire goes to ground. Um, well, factory wiring colors are different, but all your aftermarket stuff, the black wires all go to ground. Ground is not different circuits. They're all, they all basically are paralleled together. They all go to the chassis and the negative battery terminal is grounded to the chassis. So anything metal, it's all grounded. It's all the black wires, it's all the same thing. So you can use one wire for grounding three different things up here. You don't have to have a ground for each one. As long as the gauge is sufficient for the amount of current that you're pulling, you're good. So I'm gonna use the red wire for this, this is the dome light. I'm just using, these are actually kind of cheap clines, uh, just kind of a knockoff of a crimp cline. I don't know what brand that is, but it's what I use here in my shop. I have a whole different set of tools that I use for work um, that, are, that are a completely different level. Okay, so the one coming out of the center of the quick light is going to be white. I'm saying this because I need the colors to be the same on the passenger side of the vehicle. The white has to go to the same thing, the, the red and the um, green all have to go to the same accessory. Again, blacks don't matter, they're all, they're all ground. Okay, and then the last one, the green wire is going to go to this other small quick light accessory, I think is the brake light. I don't know, I think I have one backwards. The one coming out of the center is the brake light, maybe. Since this wire is pretty short, it's annoying. but I'll show you how we can make all that look better and function better. And I screwed the pooch. Ooh. 
one of the conductors slid out before I noticed, and then I squeezed the crimp. Start over. No big deal. At least it was this wire, which I have tons of slack on. It was not on the short wire. Okay, so that's all those. Um, basically, I'm going to zip tie them in a fashion that they are all coming from the same direction into those ice cream cones. And then I will conceal all of this with a loom. I know there's better ways to do this. Um, people that do this all day, every day, probably have a pretty nice system for doing it. If it's the same, same way on every one of the cars that they do just over and over again. Okay, so that's pretty much the endpoints. So now I'm just gonna kinda make a fashionable loop here that I can conceal in loom. So the drawback to doing a bunch of ice cream cones like this is you have a kind of fat area in your line. So one way to solve that is to point like two of them this way and two of them this way. I don't think I'm gonna do that this time. I think I can make this wide going to disappear like this. Okay, so that's kind of got them all bunched up and what I'll do is I'll get my loom out and I'm gonna kind of look at my options for what to do with this pigtail that's kind of sticking out if that one wire was longer I could have this whole wad up here you know what I mean closer to something that's hidden so right here with it dangling down is pretty much the worst place that you could have this, but I'm, I'm, I intend to kind of tie it up like this and conceal it. So let me, let me look at how to do that. All right, so I've just got the cage wires kind of temporarily done. It, it's not tied up, but I've got the crimps made. So um, I wanted to test these. And first I wanted to show you these quick lights. Um, the way they work is the base, this part right here, has the LED for the act, the actual lit whip. So I went ahead and swapped. I just put these little shorties on. Um, but they come with these dust covers. 
It's just a little cap, and this just serves as nothing more than a dust cover for the actual LED. So um, I'm gonna do a test here of my wiring to make sure everything's good before I get it all tied up. So this is a short whip. So this goes on, it's just like a uh, air truck, basically an air truck um, valve. So I'm doing this one handed and these are used um, shorties that I had on another car at one point. So go okay well that was a struggle for with one hand so i just rigged up a little temporary battery back here this is the four conductor wire that goes up the cage and splits um the black wire is ground and then the other three wires are split between the dome lights the brake lights and the whip lights and i got that on each side so here is the black wire i just have on the negative terminal this is the should be the dome lights with the white wire no, excuse me. So that's the whips. They work. They're both on the same conductor. So here, green wire should be these brake lights. Ooh, there they are. They work. That's interesting. Uh, it looked like one of them came on before the other one, but I guess not. Huh. Okay, and then the last wire here is this red wire which should be those dome lights, which are sticking forward. So I might I might move those. They're kind of on the far corners just because I didn't want them, the zip ties showing on the back of the cage, like all the way over here in the middle. But I'm going to kind of point them down so that they're basically a light that kind of glows on the cab and it shoots over the shoulder of the driver and the passenger. Um, I don't like an, any kind of light shining into the driver's face. Um, that's super annoying to me, like when your gauge cluster or like the display on your radio or, or some other accessory you have. If it's bright and shining in your face, like I'm real sensitive to contrast. Um, I hate having to see down a dark road and then have a bright touchscreen shining in my face. That really annoys me. So um, that's why I put these lights behind the head of the driver and the passenger, just so that it might you know, hopefully be less of a distraction. Um, I doubt they'll be on anyways while we're riding, but um, that's it. Okay, cool. So that's the test. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of zip tie all these up and put some loom over them to get them uh, better looking and, and maybe kind of manage that cable a little bit more. Essentially, each each conductor is is coiled up and crimped in here on, on each side. Um, so there's the individuals. And then, so I'm just gonna kind of tie that, loop it up somehow nice and clean. And then I, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna redo that other side. I don't like the way I routed one of those uh, wires. Okay, that's my test. Okay, so after I redid this side um, and the other side are, are both pretty much done now, you can see ultimately all it is is just, I, I try to get them in a snake, if you will, like one single row of, of, of wires. And everywhere there's slack, um, I just have kind of looped up within it. So this, this is pretty sloppy, to be honest. This is sloppier than what's normal for me. Um, I redid this side um, because I didn't really like the way it was working out the other way. One one major thing to point out in terms of like wire management here is that these the three endpoint wires are not custom length. They're all pigtails coming out of the quick light. You know, there is a pigtail coming out of there. There is there's another one coming out from up above the quick light. And there's a pigtail coming out of the Baja Designs uh, rock light dome light here. And those have like a certain amount of like several inches of wire on them. And I don't like just cutting off a bunch of that wire. I like to keep the, the wire on there because um, it's a finite amount. You, it's not like a screw down terminal, you know, where you can 
adjust your wire. So that's why we have loops of slack in here. Um, this side is slightly more complicated because it has, it's actually three ways. So there's wire coming. This is actually coming from the Switch Pro. And then it comes out, crimps to these three endpoints, uh, like we talked about. And then it actually goes back in the cage and runs down that bar to the other side. So um, it, we, have, we have twice as many of these 16 gauge wires that are just paralleled with all the others. So um, same type of deal. What I'm gonna do now is just put some loom around that wire. This is a uh, split loom. It's available and you can get it just about anywhere. It sells various parts. Um, the like Harbor Freight sells it for like a couple of dollars for a, like a six foot spool of it. Not really a spool, but a little bit. Um, I think Lowe's and Home Depot probably sell it. Uh, we get it at a, um, for, for my business, we get it at our, um, like our electronics supply store. Um, they have it, you know, on like 100 foot rolls and we just buy six or eight feet or something like that if we need it. Or sometimes we'll buy, you know, more. But we, we usually don't use this in home audio video. In cars, you use this every day. Um, a lot of it too. So I'm sure a local car, car stereo shop would have a bunch of it as well. Um, split loom is just that. It, it can be split. So, you know, it opens up and you can run wire through it after the fact, after your wires already ran. Um, there is another type of loom that is not split. I call that sleeve. And that's where you actually have to run your wire through it before, um, before you, you, you want to protect it. It's available in various diameters. This is, I think, half inch, uh, which is too big in some places, but it's not big enough in others. So, you know, it'd just be like that sometime. Okay. So, a little sloppy. And as you can see, it's not big enough for that spot where I got that big fat wad. I might kind of redo some of those. Um, or I might just double layer this. I'm not really sure yet, but I'm gonna just cut it at that spot. I'm just gonna cut it right back here where it goes past all the wire and then um, try to re rework this a little bit and then I'll do the other side. I'll show you a picture of the final product here in a minute. All right, so this is what I managed. Uh, basically, that wad of stuff is just kind of pulled up into some zip ties. I have some zip ties that have loops on them, like this one, so uh, I was able to put a, like a self tapping screw through the, through the, uh, through the cage. So, here we go. That's uh, the best I'm doing there. So I went ahead and wrapped the wires coming out of the cage. So, so they come out right here and then just kind of go down and, uh, under there and then I integrate them into the harness that runs you know up front and everything and so now I'm going to start the switch pro install and I'm gonna do a separate video for the switch pro um, but that's where all of this stuff will end up plugging into so there we go uh, by the way, on the Yamaha YXZ1000, this is the factory air intake hole. Um, the cowl that goes here has like a, the, the console has like a little scoop that comes down and then air goes under it. Um, so if you have a factory naturally aspirated Yamaha YXZ1000, that's where, that, that goes directly into the air box. So since this is a turbo car, um, the GYTR turbo, that's the intake it's up top and there's a new grill that goes over this piece right here so this is just an open hole and uh since it has a nice smooth you know corner and transition and everything i just kind of use it as a wire routing hole and that's that's common but just fyi that's what that hole is if your car is naturally aspirated still and using the stock air intake you cannot use that hole that goes into the motor so um you'll have to 
go around some other way. The factory wiring hole is down here somewhere. It like, yeah, right here. So this harness goes through a big pushy, cushy piece of foam that goes into the back. So that's, if you have a few wires, you can probably run it through there. If you got a ton of wires, you probably couldn't fit it through there, but I believe that's where it comes through from the factory. But anyways, that's that. Um, one more thing I'm going to do is put the roof on and then uh, bolt up the light bar. All right, so here's the, uh, this is a 50-inch Baja Designs Onyx 6 curved, or I think they call it arched light bar. Um, I'm going to replace this center lens with a all spot version so that so that these these are like the floodlight lenses so the center one will so all of those leds will just be a spot that goes straight out that way it'll kind of give us a long range uh view like in the center and then um i'm not really going to use any of the mounts or accessories included i'm going to use these bolts so i'll be following that same diagram that it comes with uh so the short bolt goes here the long bolt goes here um the bolts uh the hardware is always good you know and i think they're stainless steel and they come with they have like little dabs of like dry thread locker on them to help of course from backing out or anything so anyways um i'm gonna go ahead and remove that lens and put it on before i install the light bar on the car and then i'll uh, show you the wiring of it All right, so just put the light bar on. Um, I'll be honest, I do not like it. It sticks out too far, in my opinion. Um, I don't like it sticking out that far. It's curved, which I knew it was curved, so it doesn't really, it doesn't doesn't really, you know, sit well with the cage being square. But it just sticks out too far. I don't know how else to say it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I think, is work on maybe customizing this bracket i don't really like the angle of it and everything anyways so i'm going to kind of basically move it back so that this hole is back here somewhere so maybe it's in this hole or even this one and then this other bracket extends like four up up here not i don't know um i'm just gonna i'm gonna mess with it some uh the width is perfect uh, in my opinion, it's, it's just about perfect. And, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, not going to mess with the bracket right now. Uh, but I, I might, uh, might do something else different about it with it. So before I put the roof on, I drilled a hole in it and put a grommet in like you saw earlier in the video. This is a slightly bigger grommet. Um, so Baja Design includes a little harness, I guess, ends in their kit whenever you buy one of their products be it a light bar or even just their pods so you have these little ends that you can you can crimp the pins onto your wire and then it gives you the rest of the like the little seals and everything needed to make uh, uh, an end to plug in their harness to so that's that's convenient. That's nice. That um, that way it maintains this sealed harness end that they have on their product, and that also keeps the warranty intact. So they're pretty clear that if you if you cut this off, like I've done on many of my other products before, light bars and stuff, that it voids the warranty because there's no longer an actual seal in, in or anything in there. Um, I don't think that's really legit, I guess, to, to void a warranty on an $1,800 light bar just because you cut the end off because it doesn't really affect the light bar. All it does is affect the connection, if you will, um, that you could potentially compromise if you cut that and put crimps on it or something instead. So I haven't really decided what I'm going to do. I, th I think I'm just going to push because you can push their pins out um, just by unclipping this harness, yeah, can't do it with one hand, but you can you can very easily unclip that, and then their pins can slide out, 
then I can slide it through this hole and then I'll have both connectors underneath the cage where I can put their end on my cable and then um, have all that nice and neat up here in this little triangle area inside the cage. So I just kind of have the wire kind of coiled up in there. That's my plan. So I'm going to, I'm going to work on that and see how it goes. Um, I might end up just cutting their harness off. I don't know. It kind of depends on the thing. So they have this extra green wire. Um, to, to, to light up the light bar, you only need to connect ground to the black wire and 12 volt positive to the white wire. Now that extra little green wire is, it's kind of like a trigger for a dimmed mode uh, where like it goes, I think it says 75% brightness or something like that. The idea is that if you're pulling too much current, you can turn your light bar on. It's just not quite as bright. But also built into all of uh, Baja Design's lights is they have this like safety low voltage mode. I forget how it says it. Like essentially it won't, it won't continue to draw power even if it gets below. Yeah, so they call it battery management technology. And regulates the amount of current the light will draw in case of low voltage. So there's that, but then there is also the um what do they call it? Yeah, 75% power. So so you can also dim it to 75% power if you hook up that green wire. Um it's designed so that maybe you put a you put a switch on that so you can turn on the light bar with one switch but then you can flip another switch that dims it um, all you got to do is ground to that green wire uh, in order to turn on that 75 percent brightness um, so so it also says right here cutting past the moisture block will void your warranty so the moisture block is it's that end that they have so they include this little adapter that el basically eliminates the the ground that green uh, ground wire. You see the same same connector on this side. It just does not have that green seventy five percent conductor in it. So you can put this in line just kind of to eliminate that if you need to, or you can install the switch. Or like for me, I just don't even hook it up. Um, I just go full brightness or not. That's that's the way I've always done it, but. Um, I feel like your 75% thing isn't really needed unless you want uh, to pull less current. And since it has that battery management technology built into it, it's kind of like you don't really need it because it's it's kind of regulating how much current it draws anyways. Um, I don't know if it dims how it does that. I assume it just dims the light as your battery voltage goes lower. I don't really know, but... Um, of course, if you're a human and you're watching your voltage gauge, um, you can flip the switch off and turn off your light bar that's pulling 30 amps of current if you're getting low on power. So that's what I would do, and then just use your headlights or something. But uh, whatever, I guess some people just get in and go all on and just deal with it until their battery dies. I don't know. If that's you, don't do that. Turn off your light if your battery's getting low. I don't know how else to say that. Um, okay, cool. So I'm going to wire that up and then I'll, uh, go from there. Okay. So I mounted the light bar. I kind of, I modified the Baja Designs brackets to bolt into those, to those tabs that, uh, Ray made for me. I'm going to get a different bolt, uh, for these so that they match, but, um, the brackets he made for me were just too long. That bar, that light bar sat out pretty far. So, I'm pretty happy with it. That brow uh, pretty much conceals it from the driver's view. Still sticks out more than I want, but it's it's arched. So I guess if you've got an arched light bar and your cage does not have you know a radius on the front, that's just something you're going to run into. So I'm I'm okay with it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot. I might have to update that bracket a little bit um, because I don't think it has enough adjustment. But uh, uh, anyways, I, I might refine that a little bit, get some different bolts, but no big deal. I did end up using, so I put a grommet in the roof past 
this uh, Baja Designs harness through. Um, you can unclip these sides right here and basically uh, pull the pins out of their harnesses. So that's what I did to slide it through. Then I just put their harness plug back on. And then in the box, they include another, that would be the ma yeah, male side, female side of the uh, harness. So what I did is I wired that to my wire coming from the cage in there. And as you see, I doubled up those conductors so that I have enough wire gauge to do that. So um, I'm just going to make a loop in here and zip tie that up so that the connector is kind of concealed in that little triangle. That's the only thing I haven't done. But um, so that's the light bar. Did those uh, night hawks, got the halos, the underglow, the quick lights um, with the with the brake light uh, 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 base. Uh, here I mounted this rugged radio antenna. I didn't show y'all that, but that's an Axia alloys mount. It's really cool. I like it, and it's uh, it can it can sit at multiple angles, and um, that's that's a rugged radio stubby antenna. Those are kind of neat. I like them. Um, so I'm, I've got the trickle charger on the battery, and I broke one of the mirrors, so I'm, I'm ordered a, apart from Baja Designs or Assault Industries to um, to get that fixed. So I have not programmed the uh, the Switch Pro yet. I keep saying I'm going to, but I haven't. So here's the eight pillar lights, working good. Here's the light bar, bright AF. And then I'm gonna turn those off, turn on the underglow. Um, here's those dome lights, they're kind of cool under there. And then the whip and the halos. So I've got all the decorative lights on. Uh, so. The dome lights, I call them dome lights really just because they kind of illuminate the cab um, with that blue color. The actual dome light, you know, like to to, to watch or, or to use is, is with that uh, battery powered um, dragon fire piece. So here we go. Um, I'm a little disappointed the halos like I said in the very beginning of installing those things, that they are too bright, and you can kind of see that they're, they really are. They're just too bright. Um, and also, they, they aren't quite the right color. Um, they are a different color blue than the underglows and the whip lights. Um, so the quick lights are kind of a blue-green teal, maybe closer to white color, uh, whereas the... Halos are like a, I don't know, I would say like maybe even a neon blue, but, but, and then the uh, Baja Designs rock lights are, um, I think just a good rich tone of blue. So anyways, that's really my only complaint is that they're, they're not all the same color of blue and that those halos are too bright, but, uh, but there it is. Uh, all the electronics are done officially. Uh, I did a radio test, and um, so those are up and running. Not that you can really tell that I communicate with anything, but there we go. And then those pillar lights and the light bar. So this is a ton of current I'm drawing right now on that little trickle charger, but just as an overview, Look at all that light. Oof, I'm getting a sunburn sitting here. All right. Well, thanks for, um, thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for uh, subscribing and liking the videos. You know, like as always, comment as uh as you see fit you know if you have any questions or anything um just let me know i'll try to answer your videos or answer your questions in the videos um 
And uh, that's it for the electronics on this thing. Bye.